Tonight I wanted to teach you guys an ancient way of reading the scriptures and studying the word. So ancient in that it's a couple thousand years old. There's, a, there's several popular ways of reading the Bible. You can read it cover to cover. You know, you start at Genesis 1, you read page, 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 and you work your way through. Nothing's missed. You hit every topic. We've got um, like bingo Bible reading where you just spin the wheel, spin the ball, random flipping, and then you read whatever comes up. Uh, we've got like the devotional method where you have another book that maybe is topical in nature that sends you out to say read these scriptures on this topic and so that's the devotional assisted type bible reading we have the bible in a year plans you know where they try to break it off into daily sized portions you still you you make sure and you hit everything but uh, you're typically breaking off pretty big pieces of a bible at any one time to read it and all these techniques are good. There's a time and place for each one of them. You know, the I'd highly recommend that you read the Bible at least once, all the way through, cover to cover. You can see how it was built or put together and how it connects and flows. Um, but it, it can be a little challenging to persist all the way through and finish it. You start out strong. In Genesis, you've got creation stories, God's plan, His people, and moving into Exodus with Interesting stories about plagues and hand of God moving in his people. And you start getting into Leviticus and it's like start to get to be a little bit of a head scratcher like tabernacling and priesthood and sacrificial system. And by the time you hit numbers, it's like <laughs> it's a it's a struggle to, to push through. And so it can be kind of tough to persevere and finish off if you're doing it cover to cover that way. Um, the, the random reading, the bingo Bible reading, that's great when you have like short amounts of time, time to kill, like you're waiting in line or waiting for something and it's Facebook or some scripture, you know, someone's exotic vacation pictures or divinely inspired writing, you know, you got a couple minutes to spare. So it's great for, you know, random, just quick snippets of the Bible. The devotional those are good when, uh, especially if you want to go topical, you want to go and see what the scripture has to say about a certain topic, especially if you're struggling or you're having a hard time with something and they can be very motivational and inspirational. A lot of times they'll be accompanied by, you know, like encouraging stories or words of encouragement. But at the same time, the devotional can be you know, the proportion of what you're reading in the devotional relative to the scripture. Sometimes it's a little um, offset. There's more devotional than scripture itself. And um, the Bible in a year, like I said, they're trying to break it off into daily sized pieces. But even still, when you sit down to read a day, a day's worth of reading in the, the daily Bible, that's still a big piece of scripture to break off. But it's good, though, because they break up some of the, the tough or the dry parts with, you know, you'll have like a Psalms and Proverbs in the middle and then a little gospel uh, to finish it off. So it's good to help you make it through the Bible. But still, it's more like it turns into a reading assignment, especially if you miss a day and then you're doubling up. And so it's, it's hard sometimes to stay on task and finish it. But then there's another method, and it's a method that I kind of discovered or had been doing myself, not realizing that it has a whole name and a structure and a step-by-step -step process. And it's called Lectio Divina. Have you ever heard of Lectio Divina? Yeah, it's a, it's a Latin word. Um, Lectio Divina. It means divine reading. And it first got its start in about the third century. Prolific um, author named Origen of Alexandria. He was a Christian author, just a brilliant Christian mind, wrote many books, and he first sort of described this process of studying the Bible. And every three to 600 years, it kind of regains popularity. 
especially since the Catholic Church adopted it, and it's a part of their monastic uh, process of studying the Bible. And it remains popular with the Catholic Church uh, even today. And the great thing about it is, is that it's, it's very simple. There's four basic steps to it. Uh, first, you start by reading. Read the passage, right? Then you meditate. Pray. Uh, and then contemplate. Contemplate or listen. And but but the main thing to remember is that when you go into this, when you're doing divine reading, it's a it's a your main goal is to learn something about God through what He has written in His Scripture. The main objective is to learn something about God in the words that he wrote in his scripture. And then second to that is your response to that. When you learn this truth, what should I then do differently? Well, how should I live or what should I do with that truth? But remembering that that's the main objective is learning something about God by studying what he has written. Um, the, right, the Bible in a year approach. Like I said, you're, you're taking off a big bite. It's like sitting down with the ladle, the serving spoon, and you're going into the pot. And you got a lot to consume at, at, any, one, at any one time when you're doing like Bible in the year reading. But the cool thing about Lectio Divina, or the way to look at it for Lectio Divina, is more like this, this demitasse spoon, like for a little espresso. This spoon is actually my chocolate cake eating spoon, right? And uh, this is my chocolate cake, too. So uh, I don't eat chocolate cake often, but when I do, this is the spoon that uh, I, uh, I use for my cake. Because with a bite like this, it's big enough to like coat your mouth with the flavor, you experience the cake, but it's small enough that it makes a piece of cake like that last a long time slows you down savor each bite so um yeah lectio divina um so before you jump in and uh take this approach to reading the scripture because it is like a, it's a conversation you're expecting to hear from god you're hoping to hear from god through his word you got to get your heart in the right place and you got to get the conditions right so just like a conversation a good conversation get rid of the distractions right make space turn the tv off put the phone in airplane mode um, and the heart posture as well if you have unforgiveness that you're harboring towards someone you got to work that out before you expect to hear anything from god um, unrepentant sin that you're holding on to totally going to get in your way of hearing him, especially uh, when you're going to sit down and eat something so rich and precious from him. So once you got that taken care of, then you can jump in and do, do the reading. A, a common question or a good question is, well, what passage do I read and how much am I supposed to read at any one time? about this much, and especially depending on what you're reading. If it's rich, dense, you're only going to want to take small bites at a time. And if you're going into it prayerfully, God will tell you, you know, when you start reading, you'll get a sense of, okay, that's, that's the bite there. That's, that's enough to chew on. And you'll get a sense of, okay, that's the passage that I'm supposed to spend my time on today. And then read it. And go back and read it again. Slow down and read it again. It's that it's taking your time, enjoying the bite, slowing down and reading. And then um, the next step is meditation. So just like when you take that bite of cake, you savor it. You, and with the passage, you think about each word. Have I... Have I heard these words before? Have I read these words in, in another part of the Bible? And 
If so, what did they mean then and what could they be meaning now? It's, uh, there's a tendency to go in and turn it into a Bible study, right? To break out the Greek and Hebrew dictionaries and the commentaries, but that's, that's not what this is about. It's about you and Holy Spirit and His written word, and it's you working together to learn something about, about God from God. And uh, there's a tendency to turn it into like an assignment. You know, I gotta get, I gotta read this, get through this, but it's about slowing down and, and savoring it, thinking about each word. And a phrase or a, a saying that my wife likes to use with BSF is that it's, uh, it's not homework, it's heart work. This is something that she reminds her, her ladies. And, uh, so then, when you're done meditating and you've understood and thought about each word, then you move into the prayer phase. Again, this is a partnership. This is a conversation with God, and it's you saying to God that, um, "I've Lord, I've read this passage. What does it mean?" Or, "I've read this passage, and I I think it means this. Did I get that right? Can you correct me if I'm wrong? Uh, is there anything I'm missing?" And kind of like what we've learned with Paul Watson in scripture reading, in that if this is true, what then do I do about that? If this is true, what do I need to change? What do I need to do differently based on what I have come to learn? And then contemplation. Contemplation is then the other half of any good conversation where you're done talking and now it's your turn to listen, right? It's to say, okay, God, I'm done, I'm done asking for anything. I now, if anything, I sit quietly, I praise you, I'm, gra- I'm grateful for uh, what you've revealed to me today, and just rest and listen. And uh, yeah, so that's basically Lectio Divina. And uh, there, it has been a, a misused or abused over the years. Uh, what it is not is, it's not Gnosticism, it's not mysticism, where you get some special divine revelation that no one else has gotten, and that you and an elite few is some, have some new knowledge. It's not uh, Joseph Smith and the Golden Tablets. This is God speaking to you, Telling him, telling you something about him. Uh, it is you saying, God, I love you. I want to learn all there is to know about you. And uh, thanking him for putting so much of his uh, word into writing that we have. And saying, God, sometimes I'm confused. This is tough. Can you please help me understand these words? And in exchange to help me understand you. So... And I, I have a couple of scriptures for us to practice on tonight. Um, I was thinking of breaking you guys into two groups, probably just right down the middle, three and three. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that, you can walk through these steps. Don't forget the implied step there, which is make sure you prepare your hearts, kind of like we did with communion and making, searching your hearts, making sure that you're in a place where you can hear. We'll, uh, when I say it, when it say it's time, then um, you can walk through these steps with those scriptures, and then I'll get some cake ready, and we can come back together and talk about uh, what you learned, what God revealed to you guys, and what you learned about the process. So yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll write the scriptures on the board as you guys circle up.